Hey guys, just letting you know, we charge a standard fee for all the reviews that we do here. This is not meant to be an endorsement, it just helps us to keep the site running. All right, let's jump into it. Hey, what's going on everybody? Tyson back with you for another folding fat tire electric bike to check out. Now, hang on, before you roll your eyes and say like, oh, come on guys, another one of these, they're all the same. This one's got quite a bit going on that we haven't seen on some of the other ones. So let's check this out. This is the Fat Bear from Rattan E-Bikes. They've got a couple different models, one's more towards like commuting. This one is the folding fat tire bike. I love their description on their website. They say it's supposed to be as fast and powerful as a live fat bear, which that really cracks me up. This is also another value priced bike. We're looking at 1400 for this bike. And there's actually a, a pre-order going on right now. I think it's if you order before October 15th, you could even knock another 300 bucks off that, get it for just 1100. That's quite a steal, but of course we got to look at it and see, you know, what are you getting for that money? Is that actually worth it? Uh, this bike is, it's an adventure all-terrain bike and it's, to me, it's very specialized in that. There's there's a lot of bikes that, you know, they are good at a lot of things. They have different features or maybe a more average set of components for different use cases. This one is a little bit more specialized. We've got great tools for all terrain here and something that makes this bike special, check this out, is we got full suspension here. We see the front suspension fork on quite a few folding fat tire bikes. This one's a little bit more, a little more travel than some of the other ones at 120 millimeters with these 30 millimeter steel stanchions. And it is of course adjustable for a lockout here. And then you can also tune the preload on that suspension fork. But check this out. We've got a rear suspension frame here. And this is a basic component. You know, it's, it's nothing fancy. You only get 30 millimeters of travel and it's not adjustable. So, you know, that's, that's nothing to write home about, but it certainly gets the job done. It really helps to cushion out the ride a bit. And I do like the visual design of it with the trim on it. I think that goes really well. It goes with the visual appearance of the bike in general, which to me is just, it's very rugged. You've got weld points that are a little bit more rough and obvious and the sharper angles on some of the frame components. And I like that. I like the rugged look. The frame color we're looking at here, this is the light gray, and it does come with two other color options. You also have a, like a dark sea green and then a black. So you've got those options. There's only the one frame size, which is about a 20 inch frame. And for some perspective for you, if you're wondering if this bike's gonna fit you, I like the fit on this one. I'm really tall. I'm six foot three, 190 pounds. And this one fits pretty well. You know, I the seat going up higher would be nice just cause I have long legs but I think it works just fine. And the stem here, just from the geometry, the handlebars sit up a little bit higher than normal. And so even with them at their lowest settings, I feel pretty comfortable there. And as you can see, we've got some extra cables here, which is nice for raising this up a bit. Unfortunately, you get a little bit limited by the other cables down here going to the light and that front disc brake that are a bit restrictive on how far you can raise that. But like I said, I don't think you're gonna to need to raise it too far. Is it being really tall that it already worked pretty well for me? While we're looking at the cable management, it is a little bit rough here with, you know, these, these really hang out to the side a lot. I don't like that because they could snag on something, branches especially if you're riding around out in the mountains, which is something you might wanna do on this bike. Looking at the cables down here, uh, running them right under the frame here and they're just it's a little bit messy with everything there which you know this is a prototype bike which that's something we need to talk about here this is a prototype so there's a couple things on it that are a little bit different than the production model the main one of those is that the battery is a little lower capacity and we'll talk about that once we dive into the battery now, as I mentioned, we got the full suspension here, which I think is awesome. And even though there's not a whole lot in the back with 30 millimeters, it makes a big difference in terms of ride comfort. And you know, adding to that, we also have the fat tires, of course. These help out a lot in terms of comfort here. These are the Chaoyang Big Daddy tires. A little bit lower pressure range on these at five to 20 PSI, where most fat tires are higher, you go five to 30. So that was interesting to be aware of that. We've got a real aggressive tread on here that does awesome. It'll get you good traction in a variety of scenarios. Now there are a couple downsides to these tires. One is there's no puncture protection included. You get some basic puncture protection. You know, fat tires are a bit thicker, have thicker knobs on them, and so that helps out. 
These particular tires are also pretty high thread count at 120 threads per inch. So that helps too, but that's all you get in terms of puncture protection. So if you live somewhere like me in Colorado, you know, we've got all kinds of thorns. We call them goat heads or some people call them sand spurs that can really mess up your tires. I run most of my tires with slime just to prevent uh, any kind of a flat in those situations. There's a lot of solutions out there. So you'll have to check those out. You also don't get any reflective sidewall striping on these tires and actually not even any reflectors on the spokes and so that's a bummer for me that's a big safety thing most bicycle accidents happen with getting hit from the side so definitely invest you can you can pick up reflectors for your spokes or even sidewall striping reflectors that you can just stick on there i would definitely do that the something else we can talk about on these wheels the rims are a little bit wider than normal at 80 millimeters and we've got 12 gauge spokes which is nice and thick that gets you good stability and strength on these and of course the fat tires help out with the ride comfort as well you can ride with the pressure down lower i'm probably at about 10 or you know maybe 15 on these right now that helps out with the comfort be aware that does also take away from your efficiency so you can't go as far on the electric power when you have that lower pressure there it does give you better traction so if you're riding on sand or snow or something like that that's what you're going to want to do and kind of riding out the ride comfort side of things so looking at the saddle here this is a pretty basic saddle uh, you know no not even the rubber bumpers on the bottom for it it's reasonably soft and for me, I thought it worked fine. We have the rear suspension down there, so that helps out a lot. If you're going to be riding for longer trips, you could definitely invest in a more comfortable saddle. And heck, you could even go all out and get a suspension seat post, and then you just have all kinds of suspension. I think that'd be a little bit overkill, but you know, that's really up to you. And moving up to the cockpit here, we do have ergonomic locking grips here, stitched leather. These are nice. I like these. They're really comfy, especially if you are riding for a long time. And moving back up to the cockpit, I'm gonna show you guys the display controls here. I'm going to stand so I'm shading the screens. Hopefully you'll be able to see. One of the things I haven't been super happy with on this screen is it's not very bright. In broad daylight, it's a little bit difficult to see. But as you can see, we got the control pad here, power button, the eye or information is for changing the information shown on the screen. You've got a dedicated button for the lights and then the up and down buttons here for changing your levels of pedal assist. So we're gonna hold down the power button. Go ahead and fire that up, get the Rattan logo. All right, here we go. So you get your battery readout in the top here, and that is a battery percentage. I love that, it's very precise. And then you've got your main dial here that shows your speed, motor wattage. You also get your current trip distance and then your odometer here, and we can press the information button over here and then cycle through to see like our maximum miles per hour and our average miles per hour, trip timer, all of that good stuff. And you can also, of course, use those up and down buttons to change the pedal assist levels. You can go all the way down to zero. And when you're in zero, the throttle is not active. And then up to level one, a little bit of assist, throttle will help you out up to, you know, maybe 10 miles an hour. Then you can go to level two for a bit more. And of course, level three for full power. Now we do have the throttle right here. This is a trigger throttle that is on the left grip to get that tire spinning. And it's got quite a hefty amount of power to it, as you can see. And the brakes on this bike, they do have motor inhibitors. So if you squeeze those brakes, even if you're holding down the throttle, that will stop the activity. I love that because we are using a cadence sensor for sensing here. You can see it right down here. This is a sealed sensor, 12 magnet, which is becoming kind of standard now, good resolution on it. I appreciate that this is sealed. That protects the magnets from getting bounced out, keeps dirt and stuff out of there. So awesome work on there. And moving it back up to the display, just to talk about a couple more things here. If you look at Rattan's website for this bike, then their pictures show a little bit different display. It's a monochrome one instead of being color like this. And I asked the representatives about this and they said that they've got the, uh, the two different models. They have the pro version that's the monochrome display and is a little bit more basic. And then you have this one, the plus. So it's got the color display and then it's got some extra features, which we're gonna talk about now when we talk about the motor, which is has some regenerative features. So let's look at the motor here. This is a Reebok 500 watt motor. Uh, Reebok, not to be confused with Reebok shoes like I'm wearing here, but with the Reebok motor manufacturer, that's R-E-I-B-O-K. This is a gearless rear hub motor, which means you know, just magnets in there. It is a fat tire specific, a little bit wider. And 
being a gearless motor, one thing that these can do is they can have some regenerative capabilities. So they can capture kinetic motion, either from you pedaling or just from coasting down a hill. Transfer that back to the battery to charge, which battery is mounted inside the frame right there. Now these regenerative capabilities, this is a really interesting area for me. I find it really fascinating. There's a ton of debate in the community about whether regenerative capabilities on an e-bike are just a gimmick or whether they're really cool. A lot of opinions on either side. I'm not here to settle that debate. All I can tell you about is just how this bike works out here. Now, Rattan's system, they call it IPOS for Intelligent Pedal Assist System. And so that is not only handling the regenerative properties of the motor, but that's also helping out with the pedal assist so that it's more intelligently assisting you and not giving, not wasting power when it's helping you out. Now, that's really all the details that I got. And so I'm not gonna make a judgment call on whether that's a good system or bad or anything like that. That's not a whole lot for me to go on. All I can tell you about is how I've done with the bike so far. And it's pretty cool using it because the, you'll see the regenerative stuff kick in. So for example, if you're in pedal assist level one, which cuts out on the assist at around 10 miles an hour, if you just keep pedaling and go past that speed, you'll actually see the motor wattage indicator drop down into the negatives. And that's to indicate that it is taking kinetic power from you and is charging the battery. That's pretty cool to me, I like that. I like getting a lot of exercise when I ride too, so I don't mind that I'm do, kind of doing some work to charge up the battery and you know then on the next uphill I can use that charge. Um, and I'll also see the same thing when I'm coasting downhill. I'll see the it drop into the negative wattage and then you see the battery level start to go up. And so to me that's really cool. Now keep in mind these motors you're not as efficient on it. There's some drag because it's recapturing that kinetic energy and so if you're pedaling it yourself you're going to be doing a bit more work. If you're coasting you're not going to coast quite as well. And so it really comes down to personal preference if you are okay with kind of doing that extra work and not being as efficient so that you can get a little bit more range out of the battery or maybe you would rather be efficient you want a good freewheel so that you can not have to worry about any drag like that that's really up to you now how it plays out on this bike just to give you some perspective i have ridden 19 miles so far and I am at 62% on the battery. So I've used, you know, 38% of the battery to go 19 miles for a range that Rattan quotes of 40 to 60 miles, depending on how much throttle you're using or not. And I've been pretty, I've been pretty heavy on either high pedal assist or using the throttle with this. So, you know, I definitely haven't been taking it easy on it. So I think it can definitely hit that target. And you've got to consider too, this prototype has a 48 volt 10.4 amp hour battery, but then the production model is 48 volt 11.6. So that pushes you from a little bit under 500 watt hours up to more like five, I think 556 watt hours. So with that capacity, I think you can definitely do some long range on this bike. And I appreciate that because this is, you know, like I said, adventure all terrain. So it'd be great to take on a camping trip and you may not be able to charge it for a weekend while you're up there. So having that long range and some regeneration, I like that, but you know, that's up to you guys. Love to hear what you think about that in the comments, by the way, so chime in there and let us know. Now, one thing that you get with having the gearless motor in the back as opposed to a geared hub motor is it's quite a bit quieter, and it's noticeable too compared to some of the other bikes I've ridden recently that had the geared rear hub motors. Definitely quieter, so I appreciate that. Uh, I think now I'm gonna get the bike turned around and we're gonna take a look at the human powered part of the drivetrain. All right, here we go guys. So check it out. We got Shimano trigger shifters up here that has the gearing readout window. I always like to see that so you don't have to look back if you don't remember what gear you're in. And they are connected to our derailleur back here. We've got a Shimano Altus setup. This is a step up. So Shimano has turny is sort of their entry level, right? And then you have Altus above that step up in quality which i appreciate and they have the metal guard right here for the derailleur so if you do tip the bike over on accident or maybe bump into something keeps that safe appreciate that the chain ring here we've got eight speeds here we're looking at a range of 11 to 30 teeth on the back it's not a huge range but it's okay you know it gets the job done for sure you're not going to be climbing any crazy mountain bike trails in this bike and up front here our steel chain ring is 52 tooth. That's a little bit bigger than a lot of the other ones that we've looked at. And it does have this aluminum alloy guard on the outside. I'll move up here so you can see. So it's just a guard as opposed to a guide that helps out on both sides. 
This is good for you know keeping your pant legs out of here and keeping the just stuff from getting into the chain or it getting hit from the outside here. It does not help the chain to stay on very well. Now, I was a little concerned about this at first. I was like, if you're you got a full suspension bike, you're going to be taking bumps and stuff like that. Is the chain going to bounce off? And so you know, I I tried my darndest to get this chain to bounce off. I was going up and down curves over all kinds of bumps. Didn't fall off at all. So part of why it works out okay in this setup. Like I mentioned, we have a bigger than a bigger than some of the other folding bikes, we'll say that, at 52 teeth on the chain ring. And with a bigger chain ring, you get more chain wrap. You have more teeth engaged at any time. And so that makes it a lot more difficult for the chain to jump off. So I think it works great here. And I also, I like the the style of this as well with the way that they have the kind of the, un, or the, the polished metal trim on these matches what they've got going on on the rear frame uh, shock here. I like that design. It's a little bit more rugged looking. Now, uh, pedals here, so crank arms, we've got these 170 millimeter standard length on the crank arms here. And these pedals here, these are metal pedal. They're aluminum alloy Welgo folding pedals. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. So you can fold those up like that if you're transporting it folded for storage. And you get the reflectors on the side too, good for safety. And as you can see, they've got these metal bumps on the top that just help it to help you have more traction between your shoe and the pedal. Now, as I mentioned, this bike is really geared towards, you know, all-terrain, adventure riding, long range too, which is great. It would not be great for commuting. And I mean, as you can see, we don't have a rack on the rear or the front. We don't have any fenders. We don't have any bosses. So if you wanted to add that stuff, you couldn't really. And there's, there's third-party solutions where you can make that work. But you know it's it doesn't come with any of that stuff that you might be looking for if you're looking for like a commuting or more of an all-purpose bike like that this is a to me is a bit more adventure themed it's a lot of fun to ride i've been having an absolute blast on it but you know when i need to take a bunch of stuff with me or it might be riding in the rain then it's not going to work out so great so just be aware of that you know make sure that it's going to work for what you need a bike for now we have not talked about the folding aspect yet, so we are going to dive into that. And you can see the fold points on here, right up here for, whoop, got a wasp flying by me here. Okay, jumping back into it. Uh, folding uh, the front, or uh, folding the, the stem down right here, you have this, I guess you call it like the safety release that you fold up and then fold right here. I'm not gonna fold it just yet, just showing you the connection points. And then down here on the center frame, the safety mechanism is this right here that turns up and out to allow this to then fold out. And as I mentioned, this is where the battery is at. Now to talk about the, you know, before we get into folding it, just the strength and stability of these fold joints. So that's an area for concern on folding bikes is some of them maybe are a little bit loose. You've got some instability, some rattling, can feel like some sort of like frame flex. And I've been happy with the fold joints on this bike. I haven't felt any rattling or felt like they were loose or going to come loose while I'm riding. As I mentioned, I've been pushing this quite a bit with you know, up and down curbs and that kind of stuff. So I think they did a good job on there. All right, so I am going to demonstrate the folding. We'll get as far as we can here before I need to put the camera down. So this lifts up, folds down right here, and you can see it pops out on the other side here to free up the stem, which will then fold over here. And of course, that is where that longer cable comes in handy right here. Now to fold the rest of the bike, that is this connection right here. So this lifts up, fold out right here, and then the bike is able to fold in half here. And as you can see, there's the battery in right here. I'm gonna put the camera down here so that I can get it folded and then I'll come back to you guys when we're all folded up. Alrighty folks, so we're fully folded up. I'm gonna walk around here so you can get a good look at it here. For a folding fat tire bike, pretty standard. It does a little bit better job of closing together and, and staying there than some other ones I've had, but it's still not anything special. It's not a bike that you can easily maneuver while it's folded. You know, this is not the bike that you would take on the bus with you, for example. But for transporting it or storage, they did a pretty good job with it. I, I'm happy with it. It gets the job done, certainly. And as you can see, there's the battery here. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and take that out. I got my keys out of my pocket now the connection or excuse me the spot to unlock is right down here on the bottom of the frame it's gonna be a little difficult for you guys to see and i apologize the thing to note is you do have to push in on the key and then you can turn to unlock it 
take the key out. Now looking at the battery, we do have this lever, excuse me, this handle that pops out here that helps make that a little bit easier to remove. And as you can see, it is not loose inside the frame. It fits snugly, I like that. It's not rattling around in there. Come on. All right, so this is what you got. So they use Samsung cells in their batteries, which I appreciate. Good quality cells. Now, as you can see, this one right here says 48 volt, 10.4 amp hour, but on the production model, they've increased that capacity a bit all the way up to 11.6 amp hour, gets you around 556 watt hours. A little bit extra capacity, I like that. There's not any USB charging ports on this battery, but there is on the bike itself, which we forgot to mention that uh, when we were talking about the display, but we'll see if we can jump around to the side to show you guys while we're here. Yep, right here on the side, there is Come on, there's a little rubber cover here where you can expose a USB uh, port so that you can plug in and charge your devices. Awesome, I love to see that. I like to mount my phone on the handlebars and charge it. Uh, but you know, nothing on the battery, so just so that you guys know where that is at. All right, we're gonna get this put back in here. All right, we got the battery back in. I think we, I think we talked about just about everything here aside of what we're gonna talk about on the ride test. So we're gonna jump into that now, get it put back together. And I've got a new camera mount so that I can try some rougher terrain to show you guys how it handles there and we can talk about that. So yeah, we'll catch up with you when we're on the bike. All right, guys, we got it put back together. So let's take it for a spin. Oh, yep, got to raise the seat back up. All right, so we're going to go ahead and fire it up. And, you know, it's like I said, it is bright daylight out here. The display is not super bright. So I'll do my best to try to position where you guys can see that. But... We gotta work with what we can here. So starting out here, we're just gonna be in pedal assist level one and I'm gonna just take it for a little spin. Now, I don't know if you guys will even be able to hear the motor kicking in back there. Cause as I mentioned, being gearless, it is quite a bit quieter and we're just in pedal assist level one right now. You know, we're not getting too crazy. And so that stops helping out at right around the 10 miles per hour range. And as you can see, nice upright seating position here with the handlebars at their lowest setting. I'm sitting upright and I feel like I have good reach here. And so I like that. I feel like the geometry on it works out pretty well for taller riders. All right, so let's check out some trails here. This is a fun little off-road area, not too intense. And I'm still sitting down and not even standing up to get a bit more comfort. And that rear suspension, just doing awesome. Feels very comfy. All right, we got a good spot here to a little bit more bumpy, steep hill. It goes through some mud and water. And so I'm not gonna go too fast through there since you know we don't got fenders, but it'll be a fun little ride just to see what we can do here. So I'm just going on throttle right now. Should have shifted down a little bit more. Oh. It was a little steeper than I expected. So I did have to stand up and lean into the pedals a bit there. I should have shifted down first. Um, being a hub motor like that, it's those are more peaky than torquey. So that uphill torque is not very impressive you know you're not going to be able to climb like you would on a proper mountain bike of course so i don't know if you guys will be able to see or not since the screen's not very bright but we're in pedal assist level one here and i'm i'm pushing pretty good i'm pushing past the point where it assists so down there for the motor wattage it's shifted to red and is showing negative 15 which means that it's now capturing and recharging the battery We've actually, we've bumped up back to 63% here. So I think that's cool to kind of see that in action. All right, we're gonna move up to level two. Let's go up to level three. All right, guys, we're gonna go back kind of on that same trail. I'm using just the throttle now, not pedal assist, just so you can kind of see the speeds we can get going to here. So you're a little slow to start, but then once it gets into it, this thing can really move.
uh, really a lot of fun to ride. I've talked a couple times about how I love this full suspension and it it is just awesome, especially for riding like this. It's super smooth and comfy. It does a great job on those bumps. We're gonna go back down through that same area over here. So all those tall weeds definitely make me nervous. Uh, as you know, as we talked about, you've got those cables right down here. They're kind of hanging out to the side. Fortunately, those weeds aren't very strong, so they didn't do any, you know, didn't snag and do any damage. But be careful about that, especially if you're riding in the trees. That could definitely be an area for concern. Oh boy, here we go. Go throttle, go. Woohoo! <laughs> Oh, all right, get back on here. So uh, as you guys can see, the motor, uh, the torque on the motor, I should say, not too impressive when we're on those steeper hills. That was really steep back there. It can be kind of hard to see on camera, but that was a very steep grade. And I, you know, I'm up here in fourth, I didn't downshift. So motor's not good for climbing those by itself. Wouldn't really expect that from a hub motor. And now you can kind of see that in action there. And then guys, looking at the, the shifter, really smooth performance from the shifter. I mean, you know, it's a Shimano Alta system, so it does as well as expected. Uh, shifting up through them here, very smooth. I can barely even hear it behind me shifting, to be honest, which is awesome. Really appreciate that. You can also dump two at once, so if you need to downshift quickly, you can do that. Like to see that solid performance from there. We'll get another shot of the derailleur in just a bit so you guys can see it from back there. So yeah, there we go. We're charging up the battery again. And you know, I'm I'm putting in a decent amount of work here. Like I'm definitely pedaling hard. I can feel the drag from it taking some of my kinetic energy. So you know, that definitely a thing, you know, if you're riding this bike. Be prepared to get some exercise if you want to use the regenerative capabilities. Oh yeah. So we've been riding for quite a bit. So you can see we, we got all the way down to 34%, but I'm pedaling pretty fast here in pedal assist level two. I'm seeing it start to charge back up again. That's cool. Not actually here to golf, so let's turn around. So you can see I'm riding on some pretty loose terrain here and traction on these tires is just awesome. I'm swerving pretty heavily and not really getting any slippage. Feels very, very sturdy. I feel just a tiny bit of drift in the rear, but I feel fully in control. I love the traction on these tires. All right, let's go back up the other side. Woo! So I did that one with just the throttle going up that hill. And you can see when you have some speed, some momentum going, it does a lot better. If you're, if you're climbing from a slow or a, a stop on a hill, not so great for that situation. So make sure you keep your momentum up for those. See if we can pedal up some battery here. Oh yeah, we're already back up to 48%, 49. And 50, 51. So I think that's cool being able to pedal and uh, you'll see the negative wattage, see it, uh, See it going back up. How effective is it? You know, that's, it's really tough to say. You know, when I'm riding, it feels a little exaggerated to me in terms of how fast the battery drains and then how fast it fills back up. And there's some natural fluctuation too for a battery readout when the battery is under load versus when it's not. So, you know, how much performance are we actually getting here? Kind of hard to say. We're getting great distance out of it, so. At least from that standpoint, I think it's doing awesome. Alrighty guys, so here's a good spot to put the uh, tires and suspension to the test. A little bit of a hill, a lot, a lot of you know, gravel and rocks and rough terrain up there. So yeah, let's, let's see what we can do. We're gonna crank this all the way up here to level three. And I'm gonna shift down 
We'll do second, that sounds pretty good. Oh yeah, feels great. I, I was pedaling going up the hill, but I was pedaling pretty light. I wasn't putting a whole lot into it. Zoomed right up there. Felt super smooth. You know, I was just sitting back the whole time. I wasn't even standing up. Felt really comfortable. All right, guys, switching camera angles so we can you know check out the motor up close and the derailleur and back and everything else. I also was in the shade. I wanted to get you a good look at the screen just in case it was difficult to see the layout and everything in any of those other shots. I do want to call something out too while I'm looking at the screen here. The um, the the readouts on it say that they're in miles per hour, but it's actually kilometers per hour just mislabeled. And this is something that I brought up with Rattan when I was talking to him. They're like, oh yeah, it's a prototype that's messed up, but it's fixed on production. Hopefully it is fixed on production. I don't know since I don't have one of those. So I just want to let you guys know that's the condition on the test bike here. Um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna just check it out over over on the sidewalk here. It does have walk mode. We didn't talk about that before. You can hold down the down arrow there and get walk mode, which is really nice if you're maneuvering the bike with groceries or I don't know, holding a camera maybe. <laughs> All right, so let's jump on here. We're going to we'll have it up in pedal assist three, just so that you can kind of get a get a listen for the motor. And we're gonna go on just throttle here, so that you can check that out. Move the camera around here. All right, so here we go. Uh, throttle only here in level three. And so that's as loud as it gets all the way up at the highest level. And so, yeah, I had the camera right down next to it. I do appreciate the uh, the extra quietness that you get from having that gearless motor. And then let me switch uh, hands here and we're going to let you get a feel for the derailleur in action. So nice and smooth there. I, I, I like the shifters on here, they just work great. And nice and quiet, you're not really, there's a little bit of clunking every now and then, but not very loud and they feel nice uh, shifting up here in the cockpit as well. Okay guys, uh, pardon the location change. I completely forgot, I forgot to show you guys the cadence sensor in action. So we looked at it earlier, there it is. As you can see, it's a good thing that it's a sealed sensor because it's getting muddy from all these adventures that we've been going on. So just want to give you a chance to see it in action. I've been finding it takes, you know, anywhere from a half to a full revolution of the pedals to really get that to kick in. We'll get started here. There it goes. So it may be hard for you guys to hear because the motor is a bit quiet, but there's you know, a little delay there. It's about standard for a cadence sensor like this that has 12 magnets. A little bit of a delay on the start and on the stop, which of course is why we've got the throttle. So you can use that to get started. And then we have the motor inhibitors on those brakes so that if you stop pedaling and need to stop right away, that will cut off power to the motor. Alrighty folks, that does it for the ride test. We covered just about everything else on the bike. The last thing I just wanted to show so that we have it on here, this is the charger that you get with it. This is a very common depowered charger. Two amps of power, 1.4 pounds on the weight. That's a basic charger. You know, it's nice and light, so it's easy to throw in a bag, carry around, doesn't charge very fast. You know, you'd be looking at at least four plus hours to all day, depending on how low you got your battery. And when you're plugging in and charging the bike, of course, that is right here on the side of the frame. Now, it seals in there nice, keeps that safe, which I appreciate. As you can see, it's supposed to be on a leash and mine is broken. And the way that that broke is one of the times when I was sliding the battery back into the frame, it snagged on this um, and kind of pulled it inside there. You know, cause this was, this was plugged in when I pulled the battery out. And as you can see the tip here secures into that battery charge port. And so 
and when I pulled the battery out while this was attached, it pulled this in inside the frame, and then when I put the battery back in, this snagged and got just ripped off on the inside. So that, that's not good. I don't like that. You Be careful about that. Basically, you need to unplug this little leash here before you pull the battery out, or else that can break. And that's just, that's a bummer, because that's a, you're, it's a difficult thing to rem remember, let's put it that way. It does seal very nicely. I'm not worried about it falling out, even though the leash is broken, and, you know, until the last time, next time I need to take my battery out and I forget about it. So just be aware of that. And we covered all the other main points on here, and I've had a lot of fun with this bike. Ton of fun to ride. It does great on all kinds of different terrain. Really nice traction from the tires. Good performance from the motor. It's not crazy at climbing, but it does a solid job and it's a little on the quieter side. I like the regenerative stuff, but you know, take that with a grain of salt. For me, I think it's cool. This is the first one that I've gotten to really spend some time with. So it's really uh, up to you if that's something you want to use or not. And I would have to spend quite a bit more time with the bike to really be able to say like, yes, it helps a lot or no, it doesn't. But I've done great in terms of the range on it. So appreciate that. Now, as we mentioned several times, this is a prototype model. So on the production one, there's some differences. You have a higher capacity battery there. They fix some stuff with the LCD screen with the, like it's saying it's miles per hour, but it's actually kilometers and stuff like that. So and then also there's the thing with the pictures on their website having the the monochrome screen versus this one being color and having some more stuff. And you're looking on their website, I didn't really see a clear way to like order which model that you wanted to. They're, the website definitely leaves something to be desired in the information there and how clear it is. Now, Rattan does offer a two-year comprehensive warranty. That's a really good warranty, you know, especially if they back it up well. And as we've talked about going around with the components here, we've got good quality components here. We're not looking at top of the line or anything, but they're certainly not bottom of the barrel either. You know, we've got the Altus derailleur and the 180 millimeter disc brakes that are hydraulic instead of mechanical motor inhibitors and everything. So we've got some good features, but we're also missing a lot of stuff. You know, no racks, no fenders, no bottle cage bosses, no bosses for mounting anything. Integrated light, but it's really basic. No integrated tail light. So know what you're getting yourself into with this bike and what you want to use it for, of course. Now, if you guys have used one of these bikes, we would love to hear about it if you have thoughts on the company, you know, you know somebody that has one, anything like that. Chime in the comments. Let us know what you think about it. Now, we've got the full written review back at electricbikereview.com. It has all the specs, the weight, the standover height, the length, uh, all the folded dimensions, you name it. You can compare it with other bikes out there. Love to hear your thoughts there, and we also, of course, have the forum where you can discuss stuff there. All right, guys, thanks for joining me today, and as always, ride safe.